Hello there friends and welcome. Today I want to show you my first video ever with an Aeon character and we are fighting the ultimate super boss, Playful Darkness of course. All done unfair. If you've been wondering why I haven't released any content last week, it's because I finally got started on my Aeon run from the beginning to the end of the game and you know it takes time. Hopefully I'll get my Aeon guide finally done and ready at the start of next week or so, but for this weekend I have some nice videos prepared too. If you're wondering, yes, you can hit level 15 just fine by doing all of the content up to this point, especially with the latest DLC. And speaking about the Treasure of the Midnight Isles, it will also allow you to get some pretty powerful boosts, for example, Conflagrant Taco Recipe and also Demon Slayer Soup just at Chapter 3, with pretty much 99 of all ingredients. My main character is actually a Divine Hound, one of my favorite classes in the whole game, perfect for Aeon. Scylla as a full Paladin, Sociel, my usual Cleric build for him, focus on domains, a Scald Mercenary, always a must-have on Unfair, Camellia mostly for buffing, debuffing, and she can also provide a lot of free attacks thanks to her dual wielding, Rapiers with very high critical range. Lastly, Darren, for more proper buffing and healing support. Most importantly, this Darren can also do a wield. So just like him, he can give us a lot of extra free attacks of opportunities once again through rapiers. And of course, we are also aided by our very powerful trusty pets that can inflict quite a lot of damage and crowd control just by themselves. Plus serves as nice distractions and tanking. Now, it stands to reason you want to be as properly buffed with as much stuff as you can. If you are wondering how to get such high attack bonus and so on, I already have an updated guide that you can check here to the side in the video description on how to hit higher than 100 and even 120 attack bonus. So if you've noticed, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but there's this creepy background music now whenever your characters enter an area with a challenging optional encounter. I'm not sure if this was added in the Enhanced Edition or in the previous patch, I can't really recall, but I do think it's a pretty nice atmospheric edition, and it does mark danger. So whenever you hear this, be prepared because you're in for a treat. So before battle even starts, this is pretty important. Ideally, you want to get some summons between you and Playful Darkness, as to eat its initial very damaging, death-inducing hits, at least for the first or two rounds which is all it takes to defeat it really when you're properly buffed. I have Spider Swarms here from the Creeping Doom spell, which are pretty much the ultimate summon in the game, as they don't require a roll to hit the enemy and are immune to physical damage, although Playful Darkness inflicts both level drain and strength damage, so they end up dying anyways, but we can always summon more. Besides that, this is pretty important too, all of my characters have been set to hold position and also have their artificial intelligence turned off. The main reason is that once Playful Darkness spawns and comes to us, I really want my characters to act the way I want them to, for some pretty important buffs, debuffs and so on, because the reality is some enemies will also spawn right where we are, so if you leave artificial intelligence on, your characters will attack them and waste actions. Now here's how I like to start the battle. Ideally, you send a pet to aggro Playful Darkness. I have chosen Darren's Wolf here, it most likely will end up dying because of how huge the damage is unfair, but, you know, you just have to rest to revive your pets afterwards. So let us send Darren's Wolf here. So the shadows have already spawned, we'll deal with them pretty easily. I like to have Darren use a mass heal scroll to take care of the shadows. On unfair they can drain like 12 strength per hit, which is very annoying. Cast is somewhere around here to hit everything. Also, the Playful Darkness and the other Death Snatch enemy that spawns here, they have negative energy affinity, so they'll be damaged too by positive energy and healing spells. Now let's get Playful Darkness to spawn. Right, so there it is. Now we have to bait it into coming over here where our party is. It should charge at us pretty soon, I think. Yeah, it already started charging. We might as well drag it somewhere over here so it will still switch to our summons when our wolf dies. So Scylla's round has already come, which means of course Mark of Justice. She already got her Mark of Justice. Now, Mark of Justice and Creeping Doom alone is enough to destroy Playful Darkness, no matter your character's build, because your spider swarms will do full damage and it adds up very fast considering how many of them there are. We won't really rely on this, they're just here for tanking and drawing its attention away. 
Now Camellia is going for a Quicken, Greater Dispel Magic. Be sure to properly target Playful Darkness, it can be kinda hard because of all the spider swarms that are also here. And after that, she'll go for Evil Eye to reduce its very high armor class. Our main character can already activate his Enforcing Aeon Gaze ability to increase the two hit chance of all our party members. Our Skull then basically our pets can just attack. Dociel, on the other hand, is going for a normal Greater Dispel Magic. I don't have another Quicken Rod, unfortunately. After that, he'll use his Touch of Good as a swift action to buff our main character for a plus 7 Sacred to AB, which now stacks with Guarded Hearth after it was changed into a competence boost instead. This is all thanks to the Domain Zealot ability, which is why I picked it at Mythic 4. Yeah, so Darren's Wolf already exploded. <laughs> Just look at the damage, it's like 150 times 6, so it's close to a thousand damage that Blackful Darkness is dealing per round. There's really no way of surviving that, and look at the strength drain too. So Cam already got her quickened Greater Dispel Magic, and she was actually pretty lucky with her rolls, right? Because she only has 15 caster level, she needs to roll 16 or higher, and she got more than that on all of the 3 rolls. So we got Bark Skin, Greater Hero isn't perfect, because now Playful Darkness should be shaken pretty fast, as it has lost its fear immunity. Cam now goes for Evil Eye, Tosiar is already casting his Greater Dispel. Our main character already got an Enforcing Gaze, Darren finally got his Mass Heal, which took care of pretty much all of the Shadows, and he even rolled high enough on Spell Penetration to damage Playful Darkness. Anyways, now I want to turn my A and Bane ability on with my main character to see if we can dispel some more buffs from Playful Darkness on every single one of our hits. Then we can finally start attacking, especially as Sociel is about to cast his Greater Dispel Magic too. Darren can now just summon more Creeping Dooms. So Playful Darkness already took some Creeping Doom damage. Sociel's Greater Dispel also hit through, most importantly because he does have an ability similar to Fortune Hex, Divine Fortune from his Luck Domain. What this means is Playful Darkness AC has already been sharply reduced, also from Evil Eye and debuffs and dispelling, so now Scylla was already able to hit it, as her attack bonus for her first two hits is equal to 70. That's why I say bonuses in combat actually add up a lot more than what you see on your character sheet, which is only 59. Honestly, now we can just turn Artificial Intelligence back on again, and just have our characters attack, especially my Aeon. Oh, I almost forgot to use Touch of Good as a swift action, so already activated. Doesn't matter if it's only 6 seconds, because like I said, it's a swift action, just in time. <laughs> so look at all of the damage that we are already dealing, even though unfair. As the reality is, our attack bonus is super high, even at this point of the game. My dog here, for example, has 75. Most importantly, my Aeon main character has 85, which means just by himself, he could already pretty much destroy Playful Darkness, even if it still had all of its powerful buffs on, right? Because it only has like 90 armor class, we easily have more than that. And this is just our first attack, so let's see how it goes now. Once again, Fortune Hex has not been extended at all, so no cheesy interactions. But yeah, Playful Darkness already exploded from a very fun... 336 critical hit damage from our Aeon character with the Grave Singer Great Axe. We also have pretty high chances of dispelling Playful Darkness with our Aeon Bane ability. I didn't turn my judgments on because sometimes you kinda can't do both the judgment and the Aeon Bane ability. And notice how Cam got her chant off as a move action, so she was able to get 1. A quick and greater dispel as a swift action. 2. Evil Eye as standard action, and 3. Chant as a move action, all in the same round, which refreshed our fortune, Hex duration, and she can do that every round, basically. But the threats are all dead anyways. And this was all without having to hit Playful Darkness flat-footed AC. As always, proper preparation will guarantee you victory on anything, no matter if you are an unfair, fighting bloated overpowered enemies like Playful Darkness. Well, friends, so this was it for my Playful Darkness on Unfair with my A and build. I know some people usually say I go overboard on the buffs, especially for the build guys, but as I've shown you in this video, you can have all of your buffs, including low duration limited ones like domain buffs, even limited abilities like Fortune Hacks without extending it just fine for the actual battles that matter, you know, the boss battles and the tough encounters, because unlike the trash mobs, they're usually once or twice per dungeon. You do have enough uses. 
Anyways, my AN guide is definitely coming pretty soon, most likely at the start of next week, as I fully complete chapter 4, 5 and 6. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.